Today we're going to make a remote control car using the ESP8266 Wi-Fi development board, an IR module, and a remote control. You may be wondering, why use a Wi-Fi board if you're not going to use the Wi-Fi capability? And there could be a couple reasons for that, depending on your project. Initially I wanted to use the Arduino Uno with the TSOP 4838 receiver. I couldn't get any of these four to work, so I didn't know if it was the component or if it was a library issue. Maybe it needed updated for the IR remote library. And I found an IR Remote ESP8266 library, so then I tried these components with this uh, ESP board. That didn't work either. Then I found an IR module that came with my Elegu Mega kit at about some years ago, and that did work with this, so that's how I ended up with it. I'm using it out of convenience and availability, but there may be some other reasons you would use this board without the Wi-Fi capability. One reason to use the ESP8266 board without Wi-Fi is to conserve power. Wi-Fi can consume a lot of power and if you're not using that you can't extend the life of your battery. As you can see I've included some of the uh, power usage here on both of these boards. The operating voltage for the uh, ESP board is 3.3 volt compared to 5 volt of the Arduino. The current consumption can go from 15 microamp to 400 milliamp on the ESP board compared to 45 milliamp to 80 milliamp on the Arduino board. Another feature of the ESP board is that it can go into deep sleep consumption when it's not being used and that consumes about 0.5 microamps whereas uh, deep sleep or what you want to call deep sleep consumption with the Arduino board would be about 35 milliamp. The current per input output pin on the ESP board is 12 milliamp compared to the current per input output pin on the Arduino board which has a maximum of 40 milliamp. Depending on your project, size may be a concern. As you can see, the Arduino Uno is about three times the size, or two and a half times the size, of the ESP8266 board. As you can see here, I've compared the processor for both the ESP8266 and the Uno. It's 32-bit for the uh, Wi-Fi board here, compared to the Uno board, which is 8-bit. And then the memory I compared as well, the 4 megabytes of flash compared to 32 kilobytes of flash for the Uno and the 80, that's supposed to be kilobytes of RAM compared to the two uh, kilobytes of RAM for the UNO. Here are the items that I used in this project. I used the ESP8266 12E, that's the uh, Node MCU. I used the L298N motor driver, two of the three to six volt DC motors, and that came with the chassis that I bought. I used an IR module, it's just a generic one. I used male to male and male to female jumper wires. A 9 volt battery with a little adapter to fit into the breadboard. I used a mini breadboard and two half size breadboards. You can do that configuration however you like. Here's the smart car chassis that I purchased and it came with the two uh, motors and uh, the DC motors and the tires and the platform. I just got rid of the uh, battery pack. Here's the wiring diagram. Hopefully you can see it okay. If not, go to the code and look at the setup and you can see you know, where all the, all the wires go. It should be no problem. The only reason I'm using a mini breadboard is because it's still glued to the platform from the last video I did a while back. This is the code that I used for this project. You want to make sure that you use the IR Remote ESP8266 and uh, down here, as well as these other two libraries. Down here, if you had any problem seeing the wiring diagram, this should clear things up. The ENA of the motor driver is connected to D1 of the ESP8266 and then so on. Down here, D7 of the ESP8266 is connected to the signal pin of the IR module. And I come down here to the setup, and we just set up these uh, motor driver pins as outputs. And then we set up our serial monitor as well at 115200 baud speed. Before we go down here to loop, we should mention that it is important to have this decode results line right here, as well as setting up your serial monitor. And then down here in the loop, you want to make sure that you have this uh, serial print results. This will print the decoded value to your serial monitor. These numbers right here correspond with the button on the controller that we're using. And I'm actually not using button number two anymore. I'm using the up arrow for forward, backwards the down arrow, the right arrow, and the left arrow. So that's changed, but that doesn't matter. It's not part of the code. It's just a comment. The numbers here correspond with the value uh, that, uh, that it's decoded in the serial monitor. So what you're going to do is open up your serial monitor while your ESP8266 is still uh, connected to your computer with the USB cable. You're going to open this up. As you can see here, I've uploaded this code to my board, and I'm going to do a hard reset by pressing the button on my board. 
Now I've opened the serial monitor, I've checked the baud speed to make sure that it's correct. When I press the forward button on the remote, this is the number you should see pop up in the serial monitor. I just need to make sure that I'm aiming the remote at the IR sensor and then pressing the button, as you can see right here. And this is the number that I would copy and paste up there for the forward button. Then I do the same for the left, right, and backward button. All these numbers are going to be specific to your remote control. So I'll do the left button here, it should end in 9033, and as you can see they match. As we move down here, we'll see five similar sections, one for forward, backward, left, right, and stop. And they're, they're all very similar. They have uh, four digital right lines, and that will set the IN1 through IN4 pins of your motor driver, either high or low, just depending on what direction the tires that will turn to send the car forward, backward, uh, left, right, and then stop. And as you can see, stop. Uh, all the pins are set to low, and then the ENA is zero, and the EMB is zero. Now the the analog right line here, ENA and EMB, determines the speed of your motor. So you can see when it turns, it's set at 150, and when it goes forward and backward, the speed is set at 255. And you can adjust those however you like, but that is the gist of what's going on here. Okay, now I'm testing the buttons on the remote before I put the battery pack on it and put it on the floor. Each time I press a button, you can see the LED light up on the IR module. With this setup, if you're not directly facing the IR sensor, sometimes it may be a little difficult for the button to be detected. You may notice that I have a switch connected to the breadboard. It's not really necessary, so I didn't include it in the wiring diagram. Here's a quick look at uh, what I've got. Feel free to pause it and check it out if you need to. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Remember to like, subscribe, and click that bell notification button. Also share it with somebody else who may be interested, and I'll see you again very soon. Here's an example of aiming the remote at the back of the IR sensor. It can have a hard time detecting the button push. For easier detection, I may want to lay the PCB flat against the breadboard and aim that sensor straight in the air.